Welcome back to the Balanced Light of Entertainment, uh, the Good Morning Niger Show. And uh, just before we go, go on the break, uh, we've been mentioned, say we get a very, very cardiac guest in the house. Now, um, with this particular political season, where we see different politicians, they cross carpet from one party to another. As I've been mentioned earlier, it'd be like seeing a football transfer. Players, they move from one club to another, and sometimes even moving back to the previous club. And they're moving again to another club. And that's where they see the wave of politics. Now, this one don't beg so many questions. What's happening in Nigerian political scene? Uh, the movement of the political players now, uh, so to speak. Now, this one says it's going to be in, in the best interest of the people, whether they represent or of their own selves. Now, to follow us discuss this particular matter about, uh, you know, the wave of defections and the way uh, forward in Nigerian politics, we get a very, very casual guest in the house, in a veteran uh, uh, um, journalist and also a politician in the building. Uh, Miko Nigeria join us to welcome Prince Bayo Oshiemi. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Welcome Good morning. to the show. Welcome to our show, sir. So, make we look this this deflecting or cross carpeting season we would do for inside the country at this point in time, and um, with the with the turnout of how equity election be Shelley and a lot of prediction they share they, they come out concerning the 2019 election. If you say this not the proper time for our leaders to be moving from one part, political party to the other, expecting change in any political party that they enter. You said this is a political season, mm -hmm. and in a political season. A lot of activities should happen. Mm -hmm. Just like in the football season, a lot of transfers do take place. So there is nothing abnormal in people moving from one party to the other. The question to ask is, is this movement that you call def def defection for altruistic reasons? or for selfish reasons. Okay. All right, sir. Now, I, 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 the question we may have been, we are going to ask now about um, movement of uh, political players, yes. as I like to call them, from one party to another is, where does allegiance now lie? Where do we now talk about allegiance? Because usually when you see uh, a, a, a politician inside one party, I pledge allegiance to social party, I believe in the ideologies and the principles of this party, and then when things don't favor them, they move to another party. And then they now pledge allegiance to that particular party again. So where do we now, where we will come put the term allegiance of a politician uh, as regards the party when you did? Allegiance starts and ends where there's a conflict of interest. Mm. That's why perhaps they say there are no permanent enemies or even friends in politics, but permanent, permanent interest. interest. Mm. Very true. Very, very true. Now, also, I would like to bring your attention to um, the APC, first of all. Now, we don't see situations where certain members of the APC, initially, when they come, somebody like... Um, uh, the Benway State Governor Samuel Autumn. Uh, just when, just about a year or less than two years, uh, we've been seeing the party chairman, the present party chairman, Adam Sushomole. He's been praised Samuel Autumn. Uh, this is somebody that we need. He's doing very well in the, in the party and so forth and so on. And then when the governor been talking, saying he won't move, go another party. The same Adam Sushomole been come out, castigate them, say if they are bad eggs in the party, uh, with the party will do better without them. Now, how we go take care? How do we juxtapose these two statements when you don't make? Just within about a year, you pray somebody one time because the person is, is strongly in your party, and then when the person does say he won't go, the person don't turn to bad egg, and then they say uh, they, they brought out allegations, say uh, uh, mismanagement of certain funds where the federal government may give out to the tune of twenty billion naira. Does this not say that uh, once you are not in good terms with the party, uh, the party no go stay by your back? But once you day in their terms, you are doing what they want, then the party say we are for you. There are different ways of looking at this issue. A good person can transform to be a bad person, just as a bad person can transform to become a good person. Um, and it has its roots in the Bible. There used to be a soul that represented the worst in any human being. He had the transformation to become one of the best human beings in the face of it. And he became 
one of the greatest apostles of God. If you look at him from that perspective, you'll be wondering how was it possible to move from being bad to being good. In this country, for example, if we are talking of a Saul or Paul in a faraway land, in this country, we had the confessed Amroba, who is now a minister of God. Now, if you zero it in to the realm of politics, if a bad person gets into a good company, the goodness of that company can affect him to move away from being bad. If a good person goes into a bad company, he has a way of being affected. I think that is what is actually playing out. So I don't really think it's a question of, oh, if you are with me in this party, you are a good person. If you move elsewhere, you're a bad person. No. In sports, because <laughs> these days, we talk of football season, political season, of transfers and all of that. When uh, Ronaldo was playing in the backwoods of his country, was an unknown quantity. When he moved to Manchester United, he became a world star. The movement to a new environment, football environment, affected his performance. Immediately, a footballer moves from one bad company to another company that is good. You forget about his being bad in the old place. You now talk of him as the man of the moment. It's about the same thing with politics. Uh, when you talk of people moving from one party to the other, two things are involved. You'll be talking of ideology. Eh? You'll also be talking about self-interest. And uh, I think self-interest is the first uh, law in creation. So all of this must be taken together. Together in consideration. Now, I want to move on to this um, not too young to rule bill, because a lot of people, they come outside, they clamor for a man. Since the bill come outside, we see a lot of youth where they try in their own small, small way to make sure, say, um, they, them two people notice them, and they know, say, and people notice, say, they actually politically relevant in the society. You feel, say, at this point in time, with the new age where they don't come outside, bring on top this um, voting and um, presidential seat and gov gubernatorial seat, you feel, say, the youth at this point in time are actually ready come 2019 to take over power? Well, it's a question I may not be able to answer appropriately. I've moved away from the realm of being a youth and becoming an old person now. Yes, but I think uh, the law needs to be commended because it's just giving legacy to what had been happening. I want to use myself as a classic example. When I was appointed as chief press secretary to the first civilian governor of this state, I was 29. And I don't think that record has been broken, either in this state or anywhere in the country. I don't think any other 29-year-old person has been given such a key appointment. I for life break the record, but I'm way beyond 29, so my, my <laughs> own time has passed. Now, uh, if there was no law, and some people, I think Jack Conde was 50 then, thought in their own wisdom that just as you have the best among the elderly ones, you still find the best among the young ones. If it can be implemented in a holistic manner, I think the country stands to gain a lot from it. But if the truth must be told, are the youths that we have are many of them ready 
for the service, public office is asking them to offer. That question is debatable to the extent that one can say many of them are not serious. Some of them are focused and serious. But whatever it is, let's give them the chance to do it. But it's not something that be served a la carte. They must work for it. And it's not going to be a new thing. When people like Shivaolo ruled or reigned over the defunct Western region, which boundary started from the road that passes in front of uh, uh, Yaba College of Tech to Mushi, up to the Asaba end of the Niger Bridge. He was in his late 30s and early 40s. So there is no big deal if a 40, 50 year old, 30, 40 year old man emerges as the president of this country. But it needs a lot of hard work, needs a lot of commitment, a lot of dedication to duty, to the exclusion of any frivolity. But now you see, with, with waiting, you don't talk now. Some people <coughs> come outside, they talk about this same bill, this same not too young to rule bill, because if you look at the military, um, the military is allowed to recruit people as young as 18 years of age into the military. And that means, and if you look, one of the greatest things anybody can do for any nation is to die for any nation. If at 18 years, you're allowed to die for a nation, then why can't at that same age be put for any other um, political position, not necessarily the presidential position, but any other political position in the country? Because the army is allowed legally to recruit 18 years old to go and die for the country, but we do not have that age in any of the positions where we get from, from even all the way to local government level has up, high up as presidential, but people are not even asking for presidential. They're asking for the age also. Maybe they then do something about them. What do you think on top of that review? It's, it's possible. Bringing in the military, it shows that not everything about military is evil. In fact, in well ordered societies like Britain and America, it's an advantage for political aspiration to have served in the military. Conversely, at this end, we deride anything military. Now, the inculcation in the 18 year old that motivates him to be ready to lay down his life for the country is also what he needs to motivate himself to offer quality service to his fatherland. If it is deliberately encouraged to tap them young as in football, there is no reason why a 30-year-old, a 32-year-old cannot be a successful president of a big country as Nigeria. But again, some of these things have to do with what's our background, what's our culture, what's our tradition. A, a, a two-year-old child abroad, in Britain, for example, is taken through the whole gamut of life from that early stage. They are trained to conquer fear. In our climb here, we, we instill fear in the upbringing of our children. Don't move near that dog. Don't move near that. No, 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 that play, no. But if a child is trained from the, to, conquer, uh, to conquer fear and to be given the belief that is a master over this dog, that's why it's easy to see a young European child putting his hands in the mouth of a dog. In this place, we bring up our children to be afraid of the dog. Some of these things have to do with how our children grow up 
to become responsible, to become fearless, to become patriotic to their fatherland. Now, quickly, I would like to um, draw us a bit back to this defection uh, issue where we've been starting with. Now, we know, say, certain parties don't come out and talk, say, um, integrity, now they are watchword. I use, for example, the APC. When they've been starting, integrity, now one of the watchwords of the APC, say, that they want to hold on to. You know, they want to hold on to members who get integrity, members who want to follow the ideologies of the party. And I know you rightly mentioned that, first of all, personal uh, interest is what comes first as a human being. But then if we talk about integrity, can we now say that some of the parties now don't sideline integrity and they are being desperate to hold on to power or to keep numbers because you no know, say politics is a question of numbers now. And the reason why they talk this, recently we don't see the most trending issue here now. Now, um, Oga goes with Akpabio. We go greet uh, Oga Presido for inside London. That's uh, talking about President Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Buhari. Now, Mr. Goes with Akpabio, that person will be say the different allegations they hang on in neck. Uh, in 2016, we've been getting one of, 2017, sorry, the EFCC been seized some of their properties. In 2016, the EFCC also been talked, say, that they investigate Oga Goes with Akpabio. Uh, recently, again, 2018, this was in, uh, August, just recently, uh, they say um, some, they, they still investigate of, of about 1.4, excuse me, a billion naira bank gifts, as they put them there. So are we saying, can we now say that, um, based on the fact, say, this is political season, as we mentioned earlier, now we are, the political parties are somehow sidelining integrity and looking for how to hold on to strong political figures or increase the numbers, as it were? I don't really agree that the fact that uh, one politician is considered good to move from one party to the other, mm. I don't think that means integrity is being sidelined. Uh, in examining a human being, a lot of things do come into play. For example, when I was in government, my boss, Alaji Jakonde, had this attitude. If you have ishy fingers that you are quick at putting your hand in the public till, so long as no empirical evidence can be adduced to pin you down to some malvisence, what he would do is to, he, he, and he knows that this guy with ishy fingers is such a workaholic that can work 24 hours in one day. He will move you away from where the temptation to want to put your hand in the public till is high, to where you can go and use your boundless energy to work for the progress of the state. Now, it worked. In the case of Godfrey Apabio, I'm one of those who believe that if he comes into APC, he will be an asset. Because anybody visiting that state will know that in his time, he did his best to transform that sleepy state to a bubbling state that it is now. For example, if you are looking at aesthetics in a stadium, one of the, I think the stadium at you is one of the best in the world in terms of design and beauty. If you could think of bringing that down, is attracting attention to that state. So much so now that international football matches, international athletics competitions are now being taken away from the traditional bases in Lagos and Abuja to far away Uyo. Some others who are leaving the APC to other parties, you, they don't have similar records in their own states. That's the truth of the matter. So to me, if Gosfila Pabio eventually defects to APC, it will be a plus to the party. Why evidently there are some who have left the APC for the PDP who to me are good readers to bad rubbish. Now, if we even look this cross carpeting and the movement from one political party to the other, because not only APC and PDP people work out, the other political parts of the work out, 
people they come outside they ask say so because some of the reasons where a lot of them they come outside give now because they know see the certain changes where they be expect to not be the former political party and you're moving to another political party people they come outside they talk say why you not try create the change where you define waiting be the assurance say you go get that change in the other political party where they cross carpet go because now it can't be like it's not the same carcass and the same caliber of people they're just moving from one umbrella to another broomstick to another portfolio to another party what is the what was the assurance say the thing where they expect they will actually see i'm from there knowing say some of them were formerly in that party cross carpet from a to b back to a again why well if uh, somebody moved with a conservative party to a progressive party and reverse back to the conservative back it simply exposes one thing, that the person was not imbued with any sense of ideology, but protection of and preservation of privilege is the motivating factor. Once that preservation of privilege can be gotten from this party, the best thing is to revert back to so it's like uh, such people don't care if they go back to their vomit. Shouldn't such party actually screen and stop certain people like that when they go back and forth like the, like the and back and forth? Because ask. now, like you talk, it's for their own selfish, their own selfish gain. Well, uh, that that depends now on what framework is on in particular parties. There are some parties, and it, it does happen. Some people will say they want to come. People with high sense of morality in the other party will say, ah, let's examine the situation very well. Is this going to be a plus for us or not? Some parties don't care. Mm -hmm. They just want crowd. Nobody's. Don't forget democracy, politics, you're talking of number. Mm -hmm. And democracy is the dictatorship of the majority over the minority. Maybe that is the motivating factor for some parties. The APC that I belong to, we are particular about effecting positive change in the psyche of our people and in the totality of human interaction. And I think, given a situation where things have gotten so bad for too long, it is not easy to get to the elder radio that people are talking about. Uh, unfortunately, time not on our side anymore. We have just like one minute to go. I would like to quickly ask uh, you to give, uh, we know that um, youthful participation in politics these days don't decline. Uh, so we'd like you to give uh, something, say a word of advice to participation in politics this year, particularly for the youths and how um, we can inf infect and affect change uh, to the forthcoming elections and political dispensation. Well, uh, I will urge increased interest in political activities. I think it was Edmund Box that said, what good people suffer by abstaining from politics is to allow fools and charlatans to rule them. Some people, especially the professionals, the doctors, the engineers, the accountants, they are too busy minding their own professions that they think, oh, let's leave politics for the so-called politicians. Forgetting that they are refusing to be part of it, to effect positive change for society, will someday affect their own professional businesses. Because when you allow fools and charlatans to be in charge, they will be unable to bring up, formulate policies that can help professional businesses to grow. And I am a professional journalist, but I took recourse into participating in politics because I don't want fools and charlatans to rule me. And that is why I see myself as a professional in politics.
Fantastic, lovely interview, lovely time. We'll get with you, Prince Bayo Oshiemi. Thank you so much for coming inside the studio. Um, that's all. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.